Sorry about that everyone, I was having a few little technical issues there, I have no idea what happened but I have resolved it so I'm just going to find you all on my phone so I can follow along with you all. Now usually I am live on Facebook um, but tonight I am here with you on YouTube um, which is always stressful if I'm honest um, because it's so different to Facebook. I'm getting there, I'm learning. Um, so I'm just sharing this to Facebook and we will make a start. Okay, I think I've done it. I just need to work out a way to find comments now. <laughs> so um, I have been working really, really hard to um, build my YouTube channel over the last year, year and a half. Um, and I enjoy coming live with you all and I'm trying to be live more regularly on YouTube um, but life has other ideas at the moment so I planned a live today at one o'clock um, we had some sad family news so I went and spent some time with my mum um, I'm a huge advocate for family first um, family is everything so stamps, ink and paper can wait um, so I spent some time with my mum which was very much needed and then um, took the girls to the park after school. So it's been a really lovely afternoon in the end, um, but a very different direction to how I saw the day originally going. So um, if you follow me on Facebook, I did do a little post this morning saying, what shall I do on this live? And I had lots of feedback about blending. Um, a huge fan of blending. And I'm gonna bring you a few, hopefully, fun techniques tonight but we'll see where we go um please leave me some comments if um you are following along i'll try and keep up um if you have any questions please ask and enjoy um just while you're watching as well all of the products i'm using are available to purchase from my online store you can find that at www.stacymarsh.co.uk um we have a last chance sale starting tomorrow at seven o'clock, which is really exciting. And if you're on my mailing list, you'll find out a bit more about that tomorrow. And that's it. So we will make a little start. Um, I will flip my camera around and you will be able to see my desk and then we will do some crafting. So let's just do that right now. Right, so you should be able to see my desk. Here we go. Oh, what's happening to my mount? That's better. Okay, so you can see my desk, which is always nice. I've got a nice, clean piece of grid paper for you all. Um, so, ink blending. I have got some white card, not that white card. Let me get another sheet of white card. We want thin white card as opposed to thick white card. Right, so we have some regular white card stock and I want to, the first technique I'm gonna show you is just a little bit of ombre style. So ombre is quite, now I hate this term on trend. Um, in all sort of scenarios, so in the home scenario with clothing, um, in general art and design that you see, and card making is exactly the same as well. It's a huge um, trend. So I am going to choose three different blue inks. So I've got Misty Moonlight, Night of Navy, and balmy blue ink. So we've got three different shades of blue ink there. And I'm gonna create a little ombre style with this. So I've got a couple of blending brushes. These blending brushes are amazing. Um, I love these brushes because they're really smooth. They're really easy to use. They wash up really well. And 
they look nice as well. They look love, nice on your shelf. Um, they come in a pack of three for around £11. Um, and they're really, really versatile. So I've used mine loads and loads. I tend to have a couple for different colours. But I, every time I place an order, I do tend to add in another pack. So I'm starting to build up my collection. Now with ombre, um, I find the best way to start with ombre is to start with um, the lightest shade. Okay. Now a trick when you are doing ink blending, it can be a little bit of a messy affair. So I tend to have a post-it to hand and I use the gluey side up to stick this to my fingers. What this allows you to do is it allows you to hold your cardstock in place without having any ink splodges on your card and it keeps your hands fairly clean as well. I say fairly because no matter what happens, I always tend to get ink on my hands when I blend. So we're going to start with this nice balmy blue colour and I'm going to just load up my blending brush. Okay, do like a bit of grid paper when I'm blending and this is going to be the bottom of my card. So I like to work with things sideways. I've no idea, that's just the style that works for me. And I like to go round in small circles. Okay. Um, one of the tips I recommend when you are blending is to be patient. Okay. Just remember, you can add more, but you can't take away. So start with a really light colour and then add to it okay i can't remember who told me that but it's a well-known phrase in my craft circle um so i'm just adding going round and round in circles now i'm using three different inks so i'm thinking of my card in sort of three into thirds okay so just carrying on like so it also produces a really nice pattern on your grid paper. Okay, so we've got a third definitely there. So let's close up our ink pad and bring in our next shade of ink. Now this is Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight is sadly leaving us at the end of May. And we are going to be having five new ink colours, um, which... I could share with you right now, but I'm not going to because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about ink blending. I will reveal the new ink colours to you in due course. So now I'm going to start with my next set of colour. So I'm going to think about going over this line here, the line where this balmy blue blending finishes and we have the white card. So I'm going to again pressing very lightly to start just add my next color to that okay and just repeat okay this is going to be quite a soft blend so you can see we're starting to get a little build up of colour now. So I'm going to go over this. Now with your inks, if you're using stamping up inks, which I really hope you all are, um, you will find that your ink will look dark to start with, but it will dry, it will dry lighter. So be mindful of that when you're blending. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to add the next colour just yet. I am going to bring back in my balmy blue, load up my blending brush once again. And I'm going to go over that line now to blend those two colours in together. Okay. So I said at the beginning about being patient and that's what you need to do here. So you can see that's really starting to blend nicely together. And then lastly, I'm going to bring in my Knight of Navy 
ink pad. And this is quite juicy. Yeah, look at that. Love Night of Navy. I get very excited when I use Night of Navy. Um, and we're going to just repeat. Now, I've been doing some colour comparisons today in preparation for the new ink colours coming. And we've decided that Night of Navy is quite a purpley sort of blue. Um, whereas Misty Moonlight is more of a grey sort of blue colour. So... And there we have our ombre background piece of card that starts light and gets darker. Now I'm really happy with that. I'm going to leave that just there. That for me looks really, really nice. Um, so we can put that to one side before we start thinking about that as a card. Okay, so I'm going to put that to one side. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some Misty Moonlight cardstock and I'm going to trim this down so that it's the same size as that piece that we have just added our ink to. Okay. So when I think about blending, I initially think about blending on white card, but we forget we have coloured cardstock. And colour cardstock is just as lovely, if not nicer, to use your blending brushes on. A quick little drink. So I have Misty Moonlight card. And what I want to create with this is I want to create a bit of a, a focal area in the centre. So kind of think of this. If this was an oval, we want an oval sort of highlight area in the centre. And we're going to create that with Knight of Navy ink. Okay. So putting that piece to one side, I don't want to ruin that. Um, I'm going to bring in my trusty bit of post-it to start with. Okay, Add some ink to my blending brush. I always like to get rid of the excess ink on my grid paper. Um, you just get a real smooth blend that way. And I'm going to start by adding my ink to the four corners of my card now what I find is when you blend on to our coloured card it almost produces like a velvety sort of feel it, it changes the texture the look of the texture of the card um, it just makes the colour that much richer Following this round, so can you see what's happening? You can see that you're by sort of focusing on those four corners and down the sides, you're getting a real highlighted section in the centre that you'd have to work really, really hard to achieve with white card as your base. Okay. I'm just going to go over those edges once more. And I find with this technique the difficult thing is knowing when to stop. but I think I'm almost there. Okay, so I am happy with that. So can you now see that lovely little effect that we have created? So that is two very, very different looks that we have created with our blending brushes. Okay, now I'm going to show you one more before we turn these into some nice cards. I'm going to bring back in my white card and I'm going to cut another piece that is the same size. Oh, see, I've got mucky ink on my card, but that's okay because we're going to use that side. And I'm going to bring in a embossing folder. Which embossing folder am I going to have? Let's 
use this nice floral one. Okay, so this is a ornate floral embossing folder and I am going to add, look at my nail, I've managed to get my nail grubby. I am going to add some ink to this embossing folder. Okay, so just, you want to use the side that you can feel the emboss there, okay? So I'm gonna take my blending brush and add that ink to that embossing folder. So you can see that that embossing folder is now blue. Now you're gonna lay your piece of card onto the other side, okay? Because you don't want to move it. And then you're going to carefully bring this over And you want to hold that in place, okay? And we're going to run that through our machine, our stamp and cut and embossing machine. And we need to pray that this works. Okay. This is one of those techniques I always forget about that I really, really like when it's done. So, are you ready for this? Love this technique. So when you open your embossing folder, you have this really lovely, lightly embossed or debossed sort of look. And it looks quite vintagey actually. And it's just a way of getting a really subtle embossed look. Um, I'm just gonna grab a baby, a baby wipe to wipe my hands because I'm now really grubbing. So I love that technique and you can do that with any embossing folder um, now before I finish with that technique I'm going to turn this over so this is the embossed side okay so you can see that this one is raised whereas this one is the debossed side okay so I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm going to carefully just add my ink. So just to give you an idea of the two different styles. That you can create with an embossing folder. Okay, so this one here, you've got, that's the embossed side. So these flowers are raised. Um, whereas this is the deboss and you just get a more detailed embossed look or shaded look within those flowers. So let me know what you think. So I'll just bring in our three pieces. So they are our three very, very different looking pieces of card. Let me know what your favourite is, let me know what style you prefer, which technique you maybe haven't tried before. Pop those in the comments so I can have a little chat. And now we need to turn these into three cards. So I'm going to just turn this piece of grid paper over before I get covered in blue ink. Now we're going to create some card bases. So card bases, I'm going to cut two card bases. And a score at 14.9 centimetres and then cut at 10.5 centimetres for two card bases. And the other one I think I'm going to save for later okay so let's start with this ombre background the first sheet that we created okay and we're gonna pop that onto our card look how pretty that is that looks really really nice even if i do say so myself Oh, 
warps the wrong way up. We want the light shade at the bottom. For some reason my glue is pumping out, which is never fun. Okay, so that's that one. And for our second one, I am going to use this one here. I love this background. I'm really chuffed with this. I'm getting really fed up with this ink at the, this glue at the moment. Every ink I, glue I seem to have, I seem to get in a bit of a pickle with. So let's stick this down. So there are our two card bases. Don't forget to clean your embossing folder before you use it again, or you will end up with blue ink everywhere. So I'm going to use Forever Fern. This stamp set has been around for a while now, I won't lie. Um, and I don't think it's going to be around for much longer. I think this is one of the ones that we will lose in this catalogue um, changeover. So I'm going to give it a go. I think this deserves a bit of a, a final hurrah. I love this stamp set. It has served me very, very well. And I will be sad to see it go. So I have my ink, my stamp just there and I'm going to stamp this in a light colour. I'm going to stamp this in balmy blue but I'm not going to stamp it onto the card. I'm going to stamp it onto my grid paper like so and then I'm going to stamp it onto my card and you might be thinking what on earth is she doing blue leaves well I am going to show you something now so I'm stamped that there I'm going to stamp it again so this is the third generation of ink and that's quite nice but that's too light so now I'm going to bring in my night no I don't want night and navy I want misty moonlight lens okay and this is where, I think they call this no line, um, colouring. I'm basically going to try and add colour to this. Image. Without you thinking that I have stamped it. Now this is quite a delicate technique so you need quite a delicate touch which I don't know if I'm going to have a delicate touch tonight but we will see how we go. Sometimes I think it's better to watercolour it. I think I'm going to watercolour it actually because those blends are too fine. So let's bring this back in. Let's stamp off and then let's stamp on. Nice. And I'm going to grab an ink block and I'm going to in Misty Moonlight. So where's Misty Moonlight gone? Here it is. Now you can use these blocks as ink trays. I'm just going to grab a really fine paintbrush. Oh, we can have a brand new water painter. It's always fun. Do I have any water? I do have some water. Okay. So 
So I actually like to use the water painters as regular paint brushes as opposed to with water in them. That's quite good actually. Let's stop in on one. There he is. Okay. I'm going to make my paintbrush stamp and then now I should be able to get that's then a much finer and just adding my ink to get a nice delicate looking image okay again this is something that takes patience so i've no idea while i'm dem while i'm demonstrating this live but hey if i don't like it we just won't do it again So are you all still there? Are you all still following along? So this just changes the real look of an image. And there's demonstrators out there that are truly amazing at this. Whereas I am what you call a novice but if you don't if you don't try you never know do you and I want to look this to look quite sort of messy not messy because that's a terrible term but I don't want a sharp image I want quite a altered image look if that makes sense your husband's in the shed I have no idea what he's doing in the shed at this time of night He's laid my carpet today though, which is very nice of him. That's quite a lot of water there. I don't want that much water. we're getting there now with this image I'm definitely only going to colour one I think I definitely think water colouring is an art that is really underrated. The skill you've got to have to watercolour is just amazing. So nearly there. And you can actually see when this dries the difference in the tones of ink, the different sort of shades you've got within this misty moonlight. I 
we can kind of add more ink where we want. with this actually I know it probably looks quite a mess but quite pleased with how different it sort of has come out okay so I have my ink my inky image there and I want to cut that out but that would mean I'd need to find the dies let's have a look where are they forever flourishing dies they are aren't they so let's just cut this out and see what we think so let's lay this little die on like so and I'm going to run this through um, so actually that is my finished Piece. Now I'm going to show you a like for like. So if I stamp that now with Misty Moonlight ink, which is over here, oh, the dog's back. Forget that. So you've got a true stamped image. And you have that one. In. In bed. Dog has arrived. So now let's cut this out. So it may not look detailed, but I love how different that has come out. So now let's cut this one out. We now have two very, very different looking leaves. Look at those, so different, okay? Now, what you can do if you wanted to, you can add a bit of extra detail on this with a Stampin' Right marker, but I'm not gonna do that. I am going to sort of leave that alone. So you've got these two leaves here. Dave. Do not do that. The dog is now destroying his bed. Look at that on there. I think that's really, really pretty. Oh, I'm sport for choice now. I think I am going to have this one on here. I'm going to cut this out of the watercolour paper. Because it's, it's not white, but it's not vanilla. It's ever so slightly a different shade. I'm going to keep this card quite simple, I think, from here on in. I'm just going to do a few little layers. I'm just going to curl this slightly. So we've got those two different leaves i'm liking where this is going so far so let's stick this down now i've not stuck this on a card yet card base now these sorts of backgrounds are really good to create 
and then sort of leave in your stash um, to then play with at a later date. I'm going to add a few little dimensionals to here. Dave? No. The dog is now fighting his bed. It's not his new bed, luckily, but he's having a real big fight with it. And I don't want him to do that. So that's quite nice. Now, let's grab some linen thread. My trusty linen thread. And let's tie this around here. Let's tie it round a couple of times. bow. How are we doing? Are you all still hanging in there? Just getting there now with my bow. Nice. The bow is not going well. I don't know about you, but I like to tie bows upside down, so I think that's where I just went wrong. That's better. Much nicer. So we've got our little bow now. You've also got here this nice one, but you, the white is quite stark against that sort of creamier colour. So we're going to leave that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take a Knight of Navy blend. I'm going to take a dark Knight of Navy blend and I'm just going to add a little bit of ink splashing to all of that to just change it slightly. I'm just going to grab some Navy card. For our card base. Now, a friend, of, I saw a friend yesterday, a good friend, and we spoke about if we prefer white or vanilla card. Now, I am all for white card, um, but I've recently used vanilla in a card class, and it's made me realise I don't use vanilla card enough. So we're going to pop that on there. And when you put that against the Knight of Navy, you get a really nice, rich looking card. With that little focus, lighter focus area there. Okay. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a really simple sentiment on this card. I am going to use a stamp that I've been using this week and it is the Blessings of Home stamp set. Yep. craft card against that isn't that lovely really enjoying this card tonight and I'm going to stamp in Knight of Navy onto here if I can find my navy ink pen there it is I've put it away Trim this into a banner. I'm 
and here we have have a perfect birthday love this card what do we think guys and girls I'm just going to curl this slightly and stick that down have a perfect birthday love 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 this bring in some vanilla card instead of that stark white cut this out so let's take this down to nine and a half centimeters by 13.9 centimeters and let's stick this inside our card Okay, so that is our first finished card of the evening. I'm nearly 45 minutes in. We're doing well. Um, but we have components for our next card all ready made. I really like how simple that card is, um, but how detailed it is as well. And actually the effect on that hand painted leaf, it looks so, so different to what we had can't even find it now where's he gone here he is so that is our original stamped image and we've really changed how that looks I'm really pleased with that okay so the last one we have we have this here and this is our embossed background that we've added some ink to to the embossing folder And this doesn't really need much going on, I think. So let's see what I've got in my little stash of die cut pieces. Who else keeps a little stash of die cut pieces? I know I do. And they're very handy. You know when you cut something out and you've cut something wrong and you think, oh, that doesn't look very good. Um, or you cut the wrong, th you cut lots of things out and you think, that's what I'm gonna use and then you decide you're not going to well that's what i've done here so i'm going to take a little bit of ribbon here. i'm going to tie this into my card not doing too badly we are 43 minutes in okay. i'm going to attach this to my Card. and this is where it comes in handy that I don't always stick the edges of my card down let's put that in a bit closer Got myself really mucky tonight. Sign of a good crafting evening, I think. So now we have, oh, I'm liking it. So I'm just using bits and pieces that I've got lying around on my desk to bring this second card together. I don't really want to take too much away from our lovely background. And this reminds me of a bit of sort of maybe Laura Ashley sort of style. Um, quite sort of vintagey looking. Look at that. That's lovely. I'm enjoying this. Like so. And then I'm going to do the exact same sentiment. Again, in Night of Navy, this is our piece 
here have a perfect birthday trim it into a bit of a angle Oh, how good am I? Ready? Ta-da! Clever. Aren't I clever? Now, let's see if this will just peel off. Okay. It does peel off. Now, this is where I need to make a bit of a change because I'm so used to, if I make a mistake, just putting it on the floor. I can't do that anymore because it's got carpet. There we have it. I'm just going to stick that down actually, that ribbon, because it's moving and it's bowing a little bit. And that's fine because we won't see it. Ta da! Who knew I made a mistake? Have a perfect birthday. There you go. So I'm really quite pleased with the both of those cards. Oh, I need to put my bow on. I knew there was something I'd forgotten to do. So now what we do is we slide this under here. Trim it off. And then we're going to just tie a nice little bow. Oh no, I want it up this way, don't I? Because I want it to be... I like to tie my bows upside down. Terrible bow tonight. What am I doing? I think it's safe to say tonight has not been a successful bow tying evening for me. And now that's come out of there. Right, so I want my things to be there like, like this. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Better, that's much, much better. There we have it. Ta-da! All done. So we've got two very, very different cards, but two very similar designs. Um, so this one here, we've created a sort of rich velvet looking background there with um, Knight of Navy ink on Misty Moonlight card. Um, I've done a little hand... Um, watercolored this image here by stamping this stamp this image here in a lighter color and then going over with a water brush um, I've stamped onto it is the shimmer whisper white card stock and then I've added a little craft card sentiment there with a bow with really long tails that I will snip off shortly and then here we have used our blending brush. We've added ink to the actual embossing folder as opposed to onto the card. It's a nice way of getting a subtle sort of look 
on your embossing and then we've used the stamped image with a die that I had in my stash I think that is one of the scalloped contour dies and then finished with a similar with the same sentiment and there we have it so we've got two very different looking cards but two similar sort of designs I do hope you have enjoyed spending a bit of your Tuesday evening with me um, if you are watching along at home or wherever you are in the world um, don't forget to hit subscribe whilst you are here with me um, you will see future notifications of any tutorials and demonstrations I do you'll also get alerts when I'm next live um, which I hope to do more often um, if you're interested in purchasing any of the products you can do that through my website which is www.stacymarsh.co.uk um, or alternatively you can join my team my team of stamping stars here in the UK um, you can purchase a starter kit for £99 and choose £130 worth of product um, and then you're eligible for discount off future orders that you make whilst you remain active and for example you can preview catalogues before anybody else um, so for example tomorrow night demonstrators from across the world will preview the new annual catalogue if you want to take part in that you can order a starter kit um, tomorrow and take part in that event which is very exciting and again there's more information on that over at my website so that's it for me tonight thank you so much for joining me um, I do hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you all very very soon thanks then bye for now Thank <laughs> you.